Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Life in the Race. Hope you guys are doing well today. Swiss watch exports have obviously had a rough year, just like many other industries within the world. <clears throat> and August was no really really no exception to the pattern that we've seen. Um, we kind of go over the Swiss watch exports for every month, and this is gonna be the August edition. Um, so what I'll do is I'll recap July, and then I'll go into August. Uh, but before we get into that, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and smash that like button for us, it really does help us out. So, uh, like I said, July, this, basically this entire year has been pretty rough for Swiss watch exports. They've seen massive declines in the amount of watches they were exporting, obviously because of the economic impact that this year really has had. Um, people have less disposable income and therefore are buying less watches. And so to recap in July, July there's, there was a contraction of about negative 17% of uh, Swiss watch exports year over year. Um, but when you look at the 12 month moving average, we did see this really steep decline from, you know, basically uh, January down until about May and then May, June, July have kind of almost like created this kind of like flattening, um, flattening of their, of this, of this 12 month moving average. So I really hypothesized that maybe this is a kind of resistance point and we're seeing perhaps a plateau in the, uh, the declines in Swiss watch exports and perhaps we might see it tick up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, negative 17% last month, or excuse me, in July, I hypothesized that this, for August, we would see uh, still a contraction, but not as uh, steep as some of the other months. I hypothesized negative um, 15%, and we were pretty close. So if we move into the August results, August saw a decline of negative uh, 11.9%, which is negative 12%, so we were right around um, where we were thinking. And kind of like we were saying, it, I think this really is kind of like a trend where we're seeing some sort of bottom in the in the declines that we're that we've seen um, for wristwatches. Um, wristwatches fell 11%. Other products that come out of Swiss, the Swiss watch industry fell about 21%. So still a decline coming in at uh, 1.34 uh, billion uh, Swiss francs. Um, if you look at the 12 month moving average, like I said, um, you can see that. Um, where we're, the, the rate of the decline is slowing and we're almost seeing a, a plateau forming here. Um, obviously this is compared to, uh, you know, 12 months prior. Uh, so these numbers are obviously year over year. Um, but I think this is an encouraging sign for the Swiss watch, watch industry, especially because um, they've been hit pretty hard. I mean, I remember months where it was like negative 35% and that's, that's, that's quite a, a huge um, shock really. If we look at the watches by uh, material, we can see still um, fairly fairly large uh, declines. But what was interesting is that every other um, every other material besides the precious metals section was down double digits. So it was kind of cool to see um, maybe some type of product um, having some sort of decline. Notably, other materials uh, other than um, than other metals, gold, gold, steel, steel, and then precious metals. So gold, platinum, um, other materials came in at negative 52%, which is obviously um, kind of an outlier uh, compared to the others. If we look at the main markets, uh, you can see it's some of our normal names, uh, the, the China coming in at first with uh, plus 44, or excuse me, 45% uh, change year over year, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, if you think about it, last this time in, in August, uh, things were... You know, things are going pretty well and the fact that we've grown so much since last year in china that's that's huge and um uh i think that just shows the asian markets are here to stay when it comes to to the purchase of watches second was the united states who came in at negative four percent which is encouraging i think the u.s economy has taken a bit of a hit but it's recovered slowly and coming in at negative four percent compared to this time last year august of last year uh, really shows Perhaps we're getting a little bit um, back. The United States is perhaps getting back on track when it comes to um, perhaps their their uh, spending or watch purchases. And then um, followed by Hong Kong, Japan, United Kingdom, uh, and Germany. Um, again, I think some of the encouraging things when you look at the list of 30 countries, um, some of the encouraging things that I see or the fact that there are more com uh, countries that have uh, positive growth in, in positive growth variation between 2019 and 2020, uh, notably Oman with that almost 200% increase, which 
is uh, quite insane. And then if you look all the way at the bottom, Ireland with over a thousand percent increase, I think that's also kind of kind of interesting. Um, so uh, again, I think this is a these are positive signs to perhaps a recovery. This is not these are not these are not saying wow the Swiss watch industry is doing great. But I think this shows that the Swiss watch industry um, will is slowly starting to make that that recovery upwards. Um, and then uh, the next thing I want to look at is the watches by price category. So if you look here, I think this kind of holds true with a lot of um, kind of the, the tastes of people. You know, the people who are people are going to want to buy watches that are um, I don't want to say fairly expensive, but you're looking to, when you're looking to buy, purchase a, a watch. A lot of the times, it's you know your classics, Rolex, Omega. You're going to those that are costing over three thousand Swiss francs, and this chart really shows that. So you can see overall units uh, decreased by thirty one percent, and the value of the exports decreased by eleven percent. But if you look at each price category, you can see fairly. It kind of almost uh, is like a, an upward sloping curve. You know, you've got under two thousand two hundred Swiss francs really being hit by by basically no one buying any of them and then it slowly rises as you go and then when you get to that 3000 Swiss francs they almost came in at even when it comes to units exported which i thought was really really uh, encouraging this is i think perhaps where we're where we're um where we're coming out and then uh you know value at eight eight and a half percent i think that just shows the uh you know shows the buying power that, that perhaps uh, people have uh, nowadays um, and then the last thing I want to just look at is our um, uh, regions, Swiss watch export, exports by region. If you look at the variations, you can see still still negative for um, all the regions that we that uh, Swiss watch the Swiss, Swiss watch industry exports to. Obviously, Asia being the least, the Americas, interestingly, Oceania and Africa, and then Europe actually being the the most affected. I thought this was an interesting thing because it's really where the Swiss watch Swiss watches are in Europe, you know. Um, but I think Europe has had a hard time uh, battling with coronavirus, as many countries have. And so, um, you know, no surprises there, I guess. Um, so I guess moving on, like, what are my, my predictions for, for um, September? I know we're into October now, but um, I think it's going to be much of the same story. Um, I think it's, we're going to see um, similar export numbers, I think, for September. I think it's either going to come in at like negative 10% um, or perhaps um, right around that that 13% uh, mark. I'm going to say negative uh, 10%. I think we're still going to see some sort of recovery into this month. What's really going to be worrying is what happens going into the winter and, you know, going into the winter months where people are more susceptible to getting sick. And if there are second waves, if you want to define them as second waves, um, I heard a joke where people would say you can't have a second wave if the first one never ended. But um, if there is a second wave, uh, you know that's going to obviously have uh, impacts on the the decisions that countries make about the the lockdown, lockdowns that they perhaps want to have. And so, uh, if that is the case, um, you know countries may may shut down again. Um, and that will obviously impact uh, the economies and therefore individual spending power and then people won't be buying watches. So it'll be, it'll be um, I think, a, an interesting winter. I'm hoping that, um, that we don't have to, to go into that second, second wave and that uh, something, something positive happens here. I think we're trending in the right direction to make that recovery in, in Swiss watch exports. So um, we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comments section below about um, the August results. Uh, I'll be sure, check out our blog post where we'll cover, we'll write a, we have a blog post where we write every single time when we do one of these uh, videos about Swiss watch exports, we have a blog post. So you can go and check that out on our website. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below what you think next month is going to look like for Swiss watch exports. I think, um, I think it's, it's, um, it could really go either way depending on, on, on what happens. Um, also, if you did not do it in the beginning video, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you are new to the channel, as well as smash the like button for us. It really does help us out and get these videos to the people who are going to be interested in learning about Swiss watch exports or like watches. Uh, and with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time.